There we go. Andreas, how are you? I'm very well. I'm enjoying meeting you and uh, enjoy being here and sharing, well, listening to his voice, listening, listening to the voice of our inner teacher and friend. That always makes me happy. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I've really enjoyed um, dialing into your energy in the last week or so, and I can totally see why some of our mutual friends uh, just love your energy and your vibe, because I was instantly hooked. I was like, beautiful vibe. Thank you for what you're doing and your lovely work. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for the welcome. It's a pleasure. Good. So one thing that I found interesting... Um, because it's slightly different to the sequence that I experienced, was that you you thought that you were going to find some of the answers to your existential questions via the sciences initially. Maybe you could tell us a bit about that, Gust. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, my parents brought me up in, in the belief that only science can deliver facts and only science has the answers and um, back then they didn't mention yet they, they had a problem with the church and left church and also like any attempt to believe in a god um, and you know not separating the two not separating the interpretation from what he really is uh, so i didn't grow up with any religious teaching in that sense or spiritual teaching it was just science and so i believe that you know you can discover everything you want to discover through science mm -hmm. and there was an inkling in me i shall say uh, and the inkling was an idea maybe behind all the sciences or behind all the topics maybe there is a common formula and my motivation to look was i didn't know how to live my life i didn't know how i work i didn't know how psychology my, my psychology or the psychology of humanity works and i wanted to find my place i wanted to feel integrated and um yeah just know the basics of life basically so i try to combine psychology and uh, quantum science or evolution or evolution of life on planet earth and as soon as you start to scratch the surface of science <laughs> more and more question marks come up how is this even possible how is a planet possible how is matter possible how is a psyche possible or life uh, and it's such a what stroke struck me stroke me the most I think that's the word that stroke me the most uh, was how unlikely it is for evolution to bring up life mm -hmm. and uh and yeah, what like it's like a mad mad incredibly impossible coincidence for all those things to come together and yet here we are and we call it daily life. <laughs> I was like, okay, there's something more to this story <laughs> than just evolution happened and here we are and we go for work and earn our money. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what they, they were my scratches on reality. And yeah, soon after that, A Course in Miracles came into my life. <laughs> you. <laughs> because, you know, in principle, the... Um... The blueprint of the scientific approach if you think you know trying to find out what is real mm -hmm. by crossing off what isn't real mm -hmm. then you know that's very transferable to the spiritual path isn't it mm -hmm. it is yeah <laughs> well i could cross off things like there's an ordinary life like if quantum is the basis of like if we talk quantum, if quantum is the basis of our physical reali reality, <laughs> there's no such thing as daily life. Yeah. Uh, that it, it's 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 a mystery that, that not even the smartest guys understand. Mm -hmm. And yet we, 
behave and, and, and think about it as if it's just the you know the regular burden we have to bear and uh yeah so there i i wanted to go more into yeah the wonder i i i would call it now the wonder of life or hmm. mystery of life or going deeper and not staying on on the shallowness of um yeah day-to-day -day consciousness and and the fate that comes with it you just go to work you you know earn your money you have your kids you have your holidays you grow older and then you die i don't know it's a bit it's a bit little it's a, it's a small it's a, sm it's a bit dire <laughs> and uh so that was my knocking you know if that the metaphor of the the knocking is there I, that's how i knocked on the door of truth mm -hmm. um it i can see that this was just the holy spirit that used how i understood life and he used the symbols and the logic that mm -hmm. i used at that time to guide me to the place where i didn't understand anymore mm -hmm. and that's where you know it's uncomfortable of course especially if there's no mind training mm. there but uh, i always had help at every stage and even before a course of miracles and yeah just always offering me a gentle hand to make a step and to join and to to see that you can rely on life mm. Is that something you were aware of at the time, or is that like a reflection now that you always um, have to help? It's it's a reflection now. It's great that you ask. Um, I I felt I for many years after the, the, those initial awakening moments, I felt for years uncomfortable mm -hmm. um, because that transformative process um, was so intense mm -hmm. and. I saw myself as like the weirdest person on the planet, basically, like mm -hmm. someone that, you know, no one understands this guy. Like I didn't understand myself. I don't fit in anywhere. Um, I'm not unpolite or anything. I'm not, I'm not rude. I'm, I'm a polite guy, but I, I, f I felt out of place for mm -hmm. years and just through just through basically teaching A Course in Miracles, I came more and more in contact with uh, people again and talking with them. And just in recent years also, I started to feel comfortable with people who are not doing A Course in Miracles <laughs> again. That, it, it was such a long learning process for me. Yeah. And I think A Course in Miracles caused this transfer of training. Mm. And yet for me to carry this from my own inner work to brothers with the course and to keep extending that to brothers who are not doing the course and finding the same love, mm -hmm. finding the same essence there. Is, uh, on, that's on a daily basis, mm -hmm. uh, the gifts that I experience on a daily basis, truly. And uh, not all the time, of course. There's my learning process. There are my, you know, old programs that come to the surface. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm genuinely beginning to enjoy encounters, whereas years before I was afraid of them. Mm. Mm -hmm. Interesting, because I, I, you know, I like to, um, and I make a point of talking about this quite a lot on the podcast. Is like, you know, I like to find this language to speak to people who I know aren't interested or they don't know that are interested in spirituality. They're certainly not course students because in my physical world, that presence just doesn't exist and hasn't really existed. You know, it's only courtesy of the uh, internet that I've been able to connect with people with this shared passion and interest and, um, so as a consequence, I guess, day to day, I, I, I've observed myself go through that phase where I desperately wanted to share with people um, much in the same way. For example, if I'd 
tried a, a nice um, drink or a meal somewhere, you know, you'd want to tell people about it because you'd want them to hopefully enjoy the meal or the drink to the extent that you did, you know. Mm -hmm. And because the course is so, you know, the impact of it is just incredible. Mm -hmm. The desire to want to share that was very strong. And yet I had to find a context where I was just introducing people to it by just being it rather than wanting to talk about the name of the book and where it came from and what you do with it and blah, 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 and you know, and then getting caught up in sort of saying, well, they use Christian language, but they did a little, little, but and just like, <laughs> you know. that's the universal a conversation that we have about of course America is wherever we are you know it sounds Christian but it's not like you know <laughs> and it really is not Christian I mean the more say for example I know Bill Thetford used to say it's like the Christian Vedanta and you know he was the first graduate of the course really boy he was not wrong you know when you put those two things side by side and you look at the non-duality of the course and the signposts to turn within and the self-inquiry, um, using your attention to to be like the the marker, you know, as to whether or not your attention's directed out into the world or into yourself, and then what that invites into your consciousness as a as a an effect of that these these are all like they're nothing to do with the model of christianity as we've known it in our lives prior to finding the course but i don't find the language jarring personally so i'm okay with um using the language and redefining those classic terms that we've heard all of these years such as forgiveness you know you know even though that's a bit more universal and specifically christian to talk to people about this radical interpretation of forgiveness a la a course in miracles mm -hmm. that's a great conversation to have you know and it's interesting if the person isn't spiritual because then you've got to navigate this way of trying to say to them you know love's the only thing that's important love's the, you, you're not necessarily able to say love's the only thing that's real because if somebody's very much immersed in the world and they're interacting with people and watching the news and they're involved in all of that they're not necessarily open to take that on board early doors but you know if you can use that as an in to say to set this form of forgiveness up that a course in miracles teaches us opposed to what the course would call forgiveness to destroy which is the way the world's definition is geared up then again it's, it's a very very interesting um, pursuit really to to have conversations with people and to get to them without using course language christian language and finding the universal thread of human experience Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I barely have conversations like that, like in, in the wild, so to say, like the, the places where I talk about A Course in Miracles is classes, workshops and settings like this one. Yeah. Um, in in the wild, day-to-day um, -day the wild, uh, I, I hook into the day-to-day -day conversations. Yeah. And, um, and I'm so glad that I found that entry point Mm. hey are you working on sundays you know like when i'm at the bakery i was like are you on sunday this week and like oh no you have a, you have a sunday off how fantastic what are you going to do yeah. and and it's very it's non-threatening because it's <laughs> not just the conversations everyone would have yeah. but it's a door opener because i get to be in touch with my brother or sister and and join in in the christ in that interaction so uh i know brothers who are on the who are on the other side who just you know just go into the teaching and they uh talk about the course of miracles wherever they go basically <laughs> um i'm not that guy <laughs> i try to do it but 
uh, it's often been painful. Uh, <laughs> so I asked for something, you know, something else that I could do. <laughs> and just today, actually, it's good. It's so great that, you know, you bring up that subject because just today I thought, wow, something has changed. Like I re remember years back, I would be frustrated because I felt I couldn't connect with brothers I would meet in the supermarket. Mm. Now I see it's so simple, you know, I can just go with the setting that there is yeah. and uh, it's a heartwarming few seconds, uh, just a hello or whatever. Mm. There's something else that I get to uh, remember and communicate within myself in joining with this brother. And ah, I'm, I'm so <laughs> lovely. <laughs> How's um? How do your mum and dad now um, view you? Because you know what, what I found myself thinking earlier, when you were describing the um, stages of what we could call evolution, if you like, for remembering your true identity. Um, in in my mind, as I was listening, I, I was sort of thinking about how some of the people who've known us the longest are the ones who hold quite a fixed image of us and I sometimes sort of say you know it's like they've got a cardboard cut out of us and they hold it up in front of us and and you want to look from behind and it might be something really simple where you, if you've known me for 20 years and we're having lunch together and I'm eating tomatoes and you go Leon you never liked tomatoes when we were children and it's like <laughs> yeah guess what what I've changed right. <laughs> you know um Whereas the beauty of, I mean, not that there's no, you can't engineer an old friendship or um, long relationships. They are absolutely beautiful and very valuable, but equally, mm -hmm. so it's maybe the flip side being newer relationships where people meet you as you are now, they're, they're equally enjoyable because... The frame of reference is Leon now today if I'm eating tomatoes that's who I am today and you're meeting me at that point so with your mum and dad's um, leanings towards the sciences and then you having that impression and that um, influence to the point where you shed that and found your own way how does that how does that present itself in your interactions as a family now? Um, well, there was there were a few hiccups because uh, <laughs> my parents were worried about me. Yeah, uh, and um, they believe for I believe for some years they thought I ended up in a cult, right? Um, and that I was basically completely delusional about reality. Mm -hmm. That must have been their idea of me. Um, and throughout the whole process, however, they were always like staying in touch with me. Mm. Of, of course, there were awkward moments and uh, like, you know, how, how are we with one another now? Like, um, yeah. I know you're insane and <laughs> you they are insane. <laughs> so, but you're my son and, you know, you're my mom. And <laughs> so we have coffee or what are we doing now? doing the same people drink coffee together <laughs> let's find out let's find out so that's what we did and um yeah then it took some time it took years really but there was something that my mom was reflecting on she couldn't go with the teaching at all like when, mm. whenever i talked about the teaching like there was immediately yeah uh, the way how th they could go was okay everybody is allowed to believe whatever ev anyone wants to believe okay so that's it mm. but you have to take care of your life too mm. and um, I think at the point where my mom <clears throat> started to see what kind of an effect it had had on one of her friends when she was just spending time with me. I didn't even say anything about a course, but just being open-minded right. with her. Right. All of a sudden she became happy. And 
uh things like this like i don't want to brag about it but no, it's not bragging uh, it's not bragging but uh, so those were moments where she saw okay something happened mm. that contact what is it mm. so that convinced her that there must be something and mm. she sees uh, the work that i'm doing mm. uh and that people find it beneficial and it kind of gives her rest mm. uh that you know things are on a good track but still uh and she doesn't have to um it's it's not for her it's not her cup of tea she she enjoys the people she enjoys the company of the people when she gets to meet them like the brothers with who are into the course mm. uh and that's it you know she doesn't have to do mm. no other and my dad is yeah he's he's not talking very much with me <laughs> we like each other but it's simple conversations so um no deep talks in that sense but yeah i can see that, that my relationships with them i uh, is healing are, are healing in my mind mm. because um, you know the there there is like um an application so you know if you think about the interesting things about the course where it will say look you don't have to believe this you don't have to believe the, this course you don't have to believe this workbook to be a teacher of god you don't even have to be you don't have to believe in god you know it literally says that in the psychotherapy pamphlets it's like all of that stuff is just like literally just try this hypothesis of like the application of this mind training that will put you in touch with this thought system that's running under the say like the malware of the ego thought system yeah. you know beneath that the the real program that's running when you get access to that and then you become more peaceful and then you transmit peace because that's your internal vibe and there's no difference between inner and outer mm -hmm. and the people around you are like what's going on with you you know what's the what's the deal you know and and interestingly like you said you know if you just you're not necessarily sitting down and having conversations with people about it but they're they're sitting in the rays with you and going oh this is nice isn't it mm -hmm. yeah and simple it's just simple mm -hmm. and uh, yeah this is basically what i would um want to give to myself that <laughs> I am invited into a contact. I'm invited mm -hmm. into a, a meeting, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just open. You know, it's just an mm -hmm. open arms, open hearts. Like no one wants anything from me, but I'm appreciated uh, for being there. Mm -hmm. And uh, wow, how, how much? That's already a lot. You know, like <laughs> in worldly terms, and you know, the time where we live or believe to live, mm -hmm. it's already a lot just to be. Uh, appreciated just mm -hmm. by your company not because of anything you're, you're doing <laughs> or what you are but what you are in the world but yeah thank you for showing up and mm, so i can see you so i can join with you and mm -hmm. um yeah see what unfolds the other day we had our my birthday party in my little apartment there were like i don't know 10 15 people and it was just regular conversations but it was so nice and mm -hmm. um gentle and and gentle joy and uh, just an appreciation of just being together mm -hmm. and i think that's just miracles are natural and <laughs> you know we never know what that looks like but humor is certainly involved <laughs> <laughs> and transformation and forgiveness of course <laughs> <laughs> and so that's coming up <laughs> as well <laughs> um yeah yeah Leon, i don't know i suppose both share the gratitude that uh we have found something that works or something has found us mm. that is working mm. and, um, yeah so uh, i consider myself as i have found uh the answer and now it's just a uh, deepening and expanding and further yeah interestingly because like i say you know it's it's almost like the scientific method mm -hmm. 
um, with this almost like Advaita esque. I don't. I don't want to sort of refer the course to the Advaita as the Advaita is like uh, something the course is in you know in the shadow of or whatnot, but just in terms of like what I would consider that non uh, that ancient non dual. Um, philosophies and systems to just be the product of lots and lots of contemplation and deep self-inquiry so it's a wonderful yardstick but as we know forgiveness doesn't crop up in any of these systems whereas with the course the forgiveness and the definition of the forgiveness puts it in its completely individual realm but there is still this scientific method of um, eschewing between what's real and what's not real you know with this model of of like you are it it is you we are all one which again as you said right at the beginning comes back to this uh, the quantum mechanics that's just like well that fits you know the advaita fits and then the christian trinitarian model and the language that we we've heard for our entire lives redefined and I know Ken Watnick used to say, like, you know, the reason that, in part, obviously, we know the reason was because Helen was hearing the voice and through Helen's individual self, obviously, it was shaped to, mm. speak, to speak to her and to suit her ear, if you like, as we know with the psychology and the Shakespearean feel to the writing and her on off relationship with Christianity her whole life so we know that that's uh, a big element of it but also Ken Wapnick would sort of say well Christianity is everywhere and if there was um, a language of symbols which needs sorting out <laughs> it's that you know yes, yes. <laughs> and today I found myself thinking well you know if you're in an apartment and you had a um a desk of drawers and you open some of the drawers and some of them are quite organized and then you got to the one that was like a complete mess it's like well okay <laughs> that's the one that needs sorting out isn't it <laughs> take that and make a teaching out of it <laughs> um and like i said i'm i'm uh you know I've, i haven't got what some people have got of this cancelling out an old interpretation of a word or a symbol to then replace it with a course based version of that word or symbol so when i learned via the course salvation forgiveness condemnation whatever the repetitive terms are that are part of the core language it wasn't almost as like a, a bilingual kind of thing where I've got to learn it from the standpoint of another language. It was like, oh, okay, I'm learning a new language here, or I've heard that word. What does it mean? Right. And and that's so good because like, no matter where we come from in the end, there comes this point where I don't know really, I don't understand really what this word stands for. And then this question comes up like what does it stand for what does atonement <laughs> really stand for or yeah. the brother or holy spirit like i i need to have an experience of of that to to work with it and um yeah when this comes in like a bit also worse like sin or, or mm. guilt. what is it talking about i don't believe in guilt i i thought at the beginning <laughs> Uh, it it just wasn't part of my self concept. That was all, but yeah. I did believe, of course, and I still do. I'm still unlearning guilt and and sin ideas. Yeah. Uh, but when that all of a sudden came in as an experience, like ah oh, look, and this is your feeling of guilt. I was like, oh my god, I, I feel like <laughs> all the time. <laughs> uh, that's that's what this word stands for. Thank you. Now I know the course is for me. <laughs> um i'm i'm available for the teaching now thank you <laughs> and and I, I i find it so amazing actually you can be in the room with i don't know 10 20 people 
and everybody shares their experience and everybody is using different words and yet mm. everyone can completely identify yeah because it it's just a possibility to to join with that inner voice again mm -hmm. and no matter what words are being used it's about the same experience within of mm -hmm. joining and of, of of forgiveness and and remembering or reminding each other and uh, so that's a great place actually mm -hmm. uh, because we see that we all have the same goal it's not about personal personal goals anymore it's about sharing one single goal mm. and uh, finding the joy in that too <laughs> yeah. beautiful and also i tell you you know what comes to mind listening to you talk there is like um let, I think what, what we could use as an example is like you know again say ken wapnick or some of the teachers of the course will say you know the course in miracles isn't talking to leon It's not talking to Andreas. Mm -hmm. It's talking to the dreaming mind that believes it's Leon and believes it's Andreas. So you go, okay, right, wow, right, got it, you know, got it as a principle, as a concept. Mm -hmm. Then the experience of it, then sit there, do the self-inquiry, sit with that as an experience and go, right, I'm now going to watch the mechanics of my mind going, rah, 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 rah. I'm going to latch on to all of those movements. I'm going to get completely consumed by this train of thought. And it's going to go choo-choo and drive for like 20 minutes. And then I'm going to stop and go, oh, God, I've got on the train. And get right, get off, stand on the platform, watch this, you know, and then on the train, off, on, you know. And, and through that process, the mind reaches, you know, you know, the mind wants to join and the mind is looking for pleasure and it's looking externally as we know and if if you start to cultivate this sitting observing aspect of yourself that the, that these teachers are saying is the you that the course is speaking to who's watching leon and andreas read the course if you're 100 invested in these external thought journeys and then you get that 99 wow 98 even though in reality to use that sliding scale is not appropriate just for, but for the sake of language it's helpful you know and every time you're removing investment in those external journeys of thought looking for happiness outside of the holy instant and the present moment you you're you're cultivating like a development of understanding that you are just sitting there so you're building up your experience of your true shared identity and then the more time you spend experiencing that identity then the less time you spend chasing all of these journeys that are never going to satisfy you mm -hmm. and then when the course will say language word, words are, are symbols twice removed or something like that it says doesn't it so if i'm having the experience of observing how i am in the moment and then i have a thought about that that's immediately takes me away from the experience so if i go oh wow Mm -hmm. having it you know and then i have that thought and put it into words and say andreas da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. the sound the words the thought the experience the two steps away from reality mm -hmm. but if you go oh yeah i know that experience and if we disregard the specifics and just go oh yeah i know that experience then like you said you can sit in a room with 10 or 15 people who are presenting words and thoughts and symbols in individual ways because the the substrate is that shared experience of the one self that is our true identity yeah exactly and um 
so it's always worth making that effort even even if it's if it feels like an yeah like a reduction of the experience mm -hmm. now you're in the experience and they're like oh yeah this is okay as a word it is the holy instant <laughs> so holy instant and i say oh i'm in the holy instant right now <laughs> <laughs> okay okay it's it feels very much reduced to express that <laughs> but at the same time i want to take the opportunity to say okay, this cannot be an exception from the from the holy instant like this is this is to me this is teaching like verbal teaching that i use my present experience and i teach myself mm, into the joining of minds into mm into the experience of forgiveness mm. and i don't know maybe that's just my idea but uh teaching to towards a present experience uh that to me is always mm. nice because it renews my mind and when my mind is renewed then everybody else is is too <laughs> so it's worth the effort <laughs> and in my personal experience I don't know everybody's different in that sense but I feel that almost in every occasion teaching leads me into that experience um, much more so than if I would sit down with myself and meditate mm. It keeps me teaching, keeps me engaged. It keeps my mind focused. Um, it gives me a an opportunity to to remind myself of of his voice, of his word presently. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like a, the steeping part of my mind goes like, "Ah, oh, yeah, right. That was the word of God, right?" And it's now, "Ah, oh, yeah, okay. What is it? Okay, can I open up to that?" Mm -hmm. So this is this is how I use teaching. Right. When I when I'm conscious enough, anyway, <laughs> and therefore I'm. That's the whole reason why I'm doing it because it's so beneficial for myself. Mm. And I encourage others to do that too. If it, if that's their access point to the experience, then you know, go for it, even if it feels awkward, but use it. Yeah, because it's almost like a bit of a cheat code to get past the ego. Mm -hmm. And then you get to hear, like you say, your engagement with the voice. And then that helps you to become fluent in the language itself, which you are also listening to, as well as having it come out your mouth. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, you know, something I talk about a lot with people is when there's two people involved or when there's a room of people or a meeting online or whatever, I find that I, there's something activated in terms of like, I don't know, I can't remember how I normally describe it, like a sense of, I don't know, like they're going to be short fallings as words, but like a sense of duty or an obligation or a, you want to show up for that person because it's not just me in meditation or contemplation on my own going, oh, like that, you know, if you and I are sharing and you're telling me something, you know, I don't want to be going, oh, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. You know, there's part of me that's going, oh, right, okay. you know, because you lean in and you you have this sense that you want to meet that person where they are together in this moment. And, and, and that is activated in in the joining isn't it whether you think of yourself as teaching or being taught or both of you being taught or how what, all the above <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and there's still something to it that two or three are joined in my name <laughs> i am also so yeah i can see really um that it's something so reliable that um there's an extra quality mm uh in those meetings mm -hmm. um, because of the purpose of mm -hmm. the shared purpose and it's almost like a i don't know like a magnifier or like mm -hmm. an intensifier mm -hmm. and 
you know, you walk into the room and you already feel like, okay, it's, we have an appointment, obviously, mm -hmm. like we have an appointment in, in light or in, in call it what you may, you know, like a speed up or, or in clarity or transformation, because mm -hmm. there's something more there. There's, there's an extra quality in the joining mm -hmm. and maybe it probably is Jesus. <laughs> 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 I reckon it's him. <laughs> And uh, he just helps us to to use the time wisely. Yeah, the invitation spirit's going to come rushing in when two or more join. It's like, we've been waiting for you guys to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what were you doing? Okay, right, let's ramp that up, push the dial right up. <laughs> <laughs> so this beautiful film that he made um you're telling me yesterday that um i think david hoffmeister's just given it a spin in one of his living ministry movie nights that they do yeah um and the film must be like is it like seven years old or something if your son's seven, uh, seven it came out seven years ago yeah 2007. yeah mm -hmm. and so uh, been journeying around doing its bit yeah that's true and uh yeah I, I watched it yesterday too um to like more than half actually and i was like whoa this is good good reminder yeah. Yeah. uh because you know it's the content is you know the teaching it's the, yeah. the, the present teaching and um i'm just it feels like from another life actually uh or from another timeline but i'm i'm glad i, I could do it like or I could be used in, in that way. And it seems to, you know, just sit there and every now and then it surfaces again and then it disappears <laughs> again, but it's it's there. People can use it and, and watch it. Yeah, I think I'm not sure about the title. All you need is love. All you need is love. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> There's no mention of fear or grievances. Or, you know, what about us egos who like a good grievance? <laughs> actually my grievances were were the reason why uh why the title came up because uh i just had the inspiration like yeah. it just came came in again and again like i think i am supposed to do a movie about a course of miracles i have no clue and uh what do i need what camera gear do i need and how do you film things and how do you do transitions i had no ideas about how any of this works and every time i had a question like that then sure enough a sign would show up <laughs> all you need is love like, okay <laughs> that's not the practical advice i was looking for <laughs> but turns out it's true all you need is love. <laughs> that carried me through the whole movie through the entire production process wow. <laughs> Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I'd highly recommend that. I'll, I'll pop a link in the description in the video. Mm -hmm. And there's a few familiar faces in there. And, um, yeah, beautiful journey and um, physically and, more importantly, kind of mentally, really, what's, what's being unlocked in you during that mm -hmm. journey, you know, that geographical journey. Um, journey opposed to the inner journey of um getting past some of those beliefs in obstacles and beliefs in interference and and again mm -hmm. the teachings demonstrated in action isn't it right yeah it is and also like seeing that it has like its own dna in that sense like it, it unfolds the right things unfold at the right time mm. Uh, just to give the basic idea of of the outer journey um, I had no idea how to film it I thought I just going to do I'm just going to do a few interviews but then inspiration came to travel to all four corners of the European continent and then I was hooked I was like oh yeah that's okay <laughs> that's uh, random enough <laughs> <laughs> and you know going on a road trip not knowing whom you're going to meet uh, and I saw that through the process of filming that I only had the next step. The information for the next step was there. And then the next step came. Mm -hmm. 
and one journey was done and I would start to receive information about the next trip. So I couldn't like plan the whole trip in advance. There wouldn't even be contacts available at that uh, be before the time was arrived. Yeah. So it really had its own script in that <laughs> sense. Also how it then became and how the material came into a movie. And uh, I thought I had to do it actually. But then a friend of mine mentioned, I know a guy who who cuts videos and his name is No Man. And I thought, that's him. We have to see him. Let's go and visit him straight away. <laughs> I want to see the No Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but that took another two years until we actually started working together. So um it all has its right timing and in between it always looks like it's failing or it's you know coming not coming together but step by step at the right time uh now it's out there mm. and we used and i'm glad it is it's really beautiful and also you know it's amusing because in in some points in that geographical physical journey you think the journey's done and then the, the journey to, tells you like, no, no, we're going here next, dude. Come on, get your bag. And you're like, right, okay. <laughs> Another round. No. <laughs> yeah, very nice. And what else is um, happening at the moment? So I know you're um, doing a year, one of your year-long um, courses right, yeah. on a Thursday. You said that you were doing... 90 minutes on a Thursday. Right. It's part of my a regular program that I do. Like uh, it's an annual group. They meet every every week. I do shorter programs as well, a bit more intense. Um, I do workshops and I organize festivals. So mm. uh, in September next year, we'll be in the UK actually in, in Derbyshire. I nearly fainted when I read that. I was like, oh my God, thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm so excited about that one um that um, this is actually going to happen in the uk i don't i really uh, i happened to talk to david yesterday he called like i was uh, just before my class and then david hofmeister is calling <laughs> okay hi david <laughs> what are you doing and um i i shared and he and him as well he, he said yeah a festival in the uk that would be really nice and he's wondering if it's if it fits with his travel plans mm. uh, but there's something like a, it really activates me um to really it's a mystery to me i just all i can say is uh my heart is jumping up and down mm. uh, because of the joy and uh there's already so much coming from the uk community because america's community that who offers support mm. and uh, and help on the grounds and promoting it uh i'm like the, it's the door is so open mm. um some projects don't open at all like even if you lean into the door it doesn't open at all yeah but this one is like open 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 everything's supported and um so that makes me really uh excited and, and thankful for this thing to happen yeah, I was so excited when I heard, I was like, you know, is it going to be a Wonderfest or are we going to have a different name? It's uh, We don't have the exact title for that one yet, but uh, it will be your Course in Miracles Festival, your ASIM Festival. And um, there's a working title and we haven't decided on it yet. Okay, yeah, fair <laughs> enough. It would be a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm on countdown to September already because um, I I wanted to come over to Germany this year, but the situation just didn't unfold for me. So to find out you were coming to do the do in England, I was just like, oh, lovely. Yeah. Oh, how far are you away from Derbyshire? Um, well, I could set off now and I'll be there in uh, September if I walk. All right. <laughs> I might drive. <laughs> okay, you might drive. <laughs> it's not that far. Nowhere is that far in England, is it really? No. Okay, that's good. To know. Yeah, I I will be there with my guitar, and I'll be there 
with my heart open, ready to take on board everything that's going to be shared. It's going to be fantastic. Wonderful. Mm. You're so welcome. <clears throat> yeah. So I think we need to keep an eye on the time for you, as it's um, almost bedtime. It's a, it's bedtime over there in Germany, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But um, yeah, I'm I'm really grateful for the time that we've spent and maybe like um some of the talking points that i've still got on my list here is obviously um uh, a reason to connect again if you'd be comfortable to do that yeah it would be my pleasure be my pleasure to join again in this format beautiful inviting me amazing yeah really grateful that you're here so thank you for everything that you're doing I know that the uh, ripples travel far and wide, and yeah, like I said earlier, I've got we've got mutual friends who um, I can see how clearly they're uplifted by your energy. And then once I got to know you via your work, and then via this direct conversation, now I can totally understand because it's a lovely vibe that you're giving off, and I'm really grateful to you. So thank you very much for doing what you're doing. Thank you for your open mind and open heart and extending the love. It's my my joy and my pleasure always. Thank you. So be well knowingly and um, look forward to part two. Yeah, absolutely. See you in again. Yeah, thank you for your time. Thank you.